When you're talking about the running, for instance, you got to focus on how it makes you feel. And often when you start to run, it makes you feel uncomfortable. And then afterwards, it makes you feel euphoric. But your feelings are the most real thing you have. And if you want to coach yourself, go to your feelings. Look at what you're feeling. And, and we're, we're taught in the Western world something terrible, which is whatever you're feeling, eat that feeling. Shop that feeling. Netflix that feeling. Push that feeling away and go and do something, anything not to feel. But when you push your feelings away, they regroup and they come back stronger and you push them back again. And the best thing you can do as a coach and as a self coach is to really listen to your feelings because your feelings are like a classroom of children going, hey, here I am, notice me. And if you don't, they just become louder. So listen to your real feeling and then decide your feelings are the most real thing you have, but your feelings are yours to change. And when you change them, you change everything. What does it really take to master the rules of the mind? Hi there, and welcome to EverCoach, the leading online training platform for coaches. This is your host, Ajit Nawalka, and today you're talking about effective tools on how to coach yourself. Now, don't forget to hit that red subscribe button first so you can get a notification every time a new video comes out every single week. Now, let's hit it. According to world-renowned speaker, hypnotherapist, and best-selling author, Marissa Peer, self-coaching is really simple once you understand the three beliefs that are under every problem that you or your clients face. And there's only three things wrong with you. And when you're coaching yourself, if you look at the three things that could be wrong with you and fix those, you don't need to fix anything else. So when clients turn up for coaching, they often have a shopping list of what they want. And if you look at the list carefully, you'll begin to see, oh, it's what I call what lies beneath. What is really going on when someone comes in and says, I always sabotage, I always procrastinate, I'm scared of failure. They're often scared of success when someone comes in and says, you know, I know I should be working on my business plan, but I'm lying on the sofa eating potato chips and drinking beer. That's not what you work on. You work on what lies beneath. And what lies beneath is only ever going to be three things. The big one is, of course, I'm not enough, which is why I founded the I'm Not Enough movement. When people have addictions or issues or they hold themselves back or they sabotage themselves, it's always because they have this belief of I'm not enough. If I'm not enough, I'm not worth it. Mm -hmm. And if you fix that, you will fix everything. But the second one, which is very interesting, is I want something, but it's not available. I want success. But I never went to university. My parents didn't have a book in the house. I didn't go to college. And of course, nowadays, that, that is, is irrelevant. So many people who didn't go to college, didn't have a degree, and didn't come from money have done so well. In health coaching, and people say, you know, I, I just want to be well, but I, I've got the depressed gene. I've got the alcoholic gene. There is actually no such thing as the depressed gene. You learn what you live. If you see your mom going, I've got the depression, then it's the same thing as seeing your mom going, I've got terrible cramps, it's my time of month. You, you learn what you live. You become that expectation um, thing wrong with you, which is so interesting, is this belief that I'm different. I'm different, and if I'm different, I can't really connect. I can't connect with you because I'm not like you. And actually, our greatest fear is to be different. Our greatest fear is, of course, not making it and dying. But of course, the more you're the same, the more likely you are to connect. In tribal times, we connect. We look the same, we did the same. We were in a tribe, and safety was a numbers game. And as long as you were like everyone else, you were part of that tribe. But now we live in multicultural worlds, and it's very easy to go, you know, I'm so different and I can't connect, but I say, well, you know what, that's everyone's fear, and honestly, if you think you're different, you know what that makes you? It makes you the same as everyone, and it makes everyone the same as you, because that's your greatest fear, and I work with so many troubled teens, and they say, you know, I'm, I'm different, I'm the only kid at school who's poor. 
If you take a closer look to any of your clients or your own challenges, you'll realize that the core issue of all problems lie on one of these three things. Think about a challenge you're having right now and ask yourself, why is this challenge actually a challenge? Which of the three beliefs is affecting me? How is this belief showing up? Why is this belief showing up? Ask yourself why you're extending a behavior that doesn't allow you to get to the goal that you really want. This is really important. Why are you sabotaging yourself and stopping yourself from achieving your goals? Is it your belief that you're not good enough? Is it that what you want is not available? Or is it that you believe that you are different? Identifying the underlying issue to any challenge that might be stopping you from achieving your goals is the most important step to overcoming it. But you can't overcome your challenge just by being conscious about the belief. The belief is not serving you. The next step is to reframe these beliefs into ones that will serve you. Stop telling yourself it's not available and go, everything is available to me with bells on. Mm -hmm. Stop telling yourself that you're not enough and say I am enough because your mind doesn't stop to think about what you say. When you say I'm not enough, it says, well, that's true. When you go, I'm enough, it says, well, that's true. When you say I'm different, it looks for reasons to justify why you're different. When you say I'm the same, it does exactly the same thing. You know, you make your beliefs, but then your beliefs make you. And then even more weird is that the world starts to honor whatever you believe. You know, if you believe that cats are vicious, scratchy things and are horrible, selfish creatures, they'll scratch you. If you believe, oh, they're the most lovely, cuddly, yummy things, then they'll lie on your lap and purr because your thoughts are an energy that radiate out from you and back to you people, even animals that match your thinking. You know, mm. you think your thoughts out into the world, it kind of thinks them back. And we know that, but we should know, well, why don't you just change your thoughts then? Mm. And that's part of being a great coach. Really look at your thoughts, challenge them, and then say, but why do I even believe that? Who told me that? What were they basing that on? What a powerful statement. You make your beliefs, and then your beliefs make you. Whatever we tell ourselves is what our mind believes. The mind has no capacity to reason with you. You have to learn how to coach yourself to let go of these beliefs and reframe them into beliefs that work for you. Once you practice this on yourself, you'll be able to teach your clients to do it too. What's your go-to self-coaching technique? Share it with us in the comment section below. So we have identified the beliefs we need to change. How can we coach ourselves to reframe it? Well, start with understanding where does that belief come from? Go back to your childhood or younger years, identify a time in your life when this belief showed up and think about the circumstances, culture, and people that may have influenced your thinking. When we grow up, we learn what we see, how people act, how they think, how they live. We grow up being familiar with certain conditions and unfamiliar to those things we don't know. And when we are facing a challenge, it's a challenge because it's unfamiliar. We are not used to the situation and therefore our mind, whose role is to protect us, reacts by holding us back and sabotaging our goals. It is a rule of the mind that we like what's familiar and we don't like what's unfamiliar. But here's another rule, you can make anything you like familiar. You know, for years and years of my life, I got on a plane and I turned right. For years and years, I went on the train in normal economy, and I didn't know any better. I didn't think anything of it, but as I became successful, my clients would always send me first-class plane tickets, first-class rail tickets. And of course, once turning left becomes familiar, you think, oh no, now I can't go back to the other way because it's become familiar. It's like when I very first spoke on stage, I always remember years and years ago being asked to go to UCLA and address doctors at a medical convention and I flew in I didn't I had to fly in the day that I was giving that talk so I was kind of tired 
and I had to ask for a podium. I had to hold on to that for dear life. My legs were shaking. I couldn't move around the audience and talk with this long mic because I thought, God, I might fall over. I just held on to that podium. Nobody could see my legs shaking, which is why I asked for it. And I just spoke to them. And then as I spoke more and more and more, it became so familiar that I could do it standing on my head. I could walk on stage and I could talk and I could walk around. And I was giving a talk recently and my heels kept going through the floor of the stage. And I was saying, oh, I'm really not liking this. But I laughed about it mm -hmm. because when you do something enough, it's familiar. So you're absolutely correct. You look at why is this unfamiliar? Because unfamiliar link is, goes hand in hand with not available. Then you go, well, well how can I make it familiar? Mm. I keep stopping and starting, but the thing is to just keep going. And one of the best things you can say when you're coaching myself is this, I am making this familiar. I am making this familiar. I will make this familiar. The key here is when you want something, make it familiar. As we have already defined earlier in this video, our mind believes what we tell it. So the easiest and most effective tool to make an activity familiar is to tell ourselves, I must make this familiar. I am making this familiar. Do it again and again and again until you become comfortable and confident doing it. If it's waking up at 6 a.m. every day, do it over and over again until your body starts getting used to it and eventually you won't even need an alarm clock to wake up at that time. Another great tool of mastering the mind is lie, cheat, and steal. So I call lie, cheat, and steal. When you're running in the rain, you don't go, oh, it's raining. I could be at home watching Netflix. You say, I love it. I love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. My body loves it, my muscles love it. You don't have to love it, by the way. When you're doing the 400 sit-up or the plank, and you're tired, you just keep saying, my body loves this, it adores it, it thrills it. Because then you bypass the part that goes, I don't really like this, it's so unfamiliar. I could be lying on the sofa now watching a movie. So mm -hmm. not only do you have to make yourself do it, you have to make yourself like it. And how you make yourself like it is what I call lie, cheat, and still lie to your mind cheat fear and resistance and steal back the ability to love working out because no kid goes I don't really like running and jumping I don't like playing I mean if you spent one day doing what Ari does you'd be exhausted <laughs> because they run and move and tumble and they're full of energy they don't go out I just want to sit in my high chair all day they they are so active and so the belief that it's unfamiliar is actually not strictly true Mm -hmm. And you're going to reactivate, re-manifest, and regenerate mm -hmm. what you were naturally born with, which is loving to move. But we've just mm -hmm. forgotten how much we like it. And, and one of the things I do in RTT a lot is to tell people, because I make them a recording, we are reactivating, re-manifesting, regenerating the confidence you were born with, the love of life you were born with, the drive to succeed that you were born with. So how you coach yourself to the gym is realize why you don't do it. Remember, you once upon a time loved movement more than anything in the world and keep telling yourself you love it and then it will stop being what you do and it will become who you are because most people don't love the gym. But then after all, they think, no, I really like it now. Lie, cheat and steal your way into training your mind to like what you want to achieve. It's a powerful example of how the things we tell ourselves impact our success or failure in life. My wish for you is that you hone your self-coaching skills to become a better version of yourself and a better coach for your clients. The tools we went through today are not only useful for you, but for you to teach your clients and coach them through this deep transformation. This video was based on Marissa Pierce's self-coaching episode in our program, Coaching Mastery, where we take you behind the scenes with over 50 plus world-class coaches who break down their process so you can acquire the skills that create powerful results and impact. Click on the link to find out more about Coaching Mastery. Now, it's your turn. What's your favorite tool for coaching yourself? Share your tips and tricks with us in the comment section below. Hey, you're still here. That's awesome. 
You deserve a standing ovation for staying all the way until the end. Help us spread the love and drop a like on this video. Share it with your friends and colleagues who might also find it useful. Sharing is an expression of love. We release videos like these every week. You probably want to be notified. So go ahead and smash that subscribe button so you get a notification on YouTube every time we release a new video. Be kind, stay awesome, and have a beautiful day.